Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Himan Namdari from Worcester Polytechnic Institute, uh, and I'm a PhD student at Data Science. Today, I would like to talk about uh, Hearst exponent. We will be diving into fascinating aspect of financial analysis, uh, which is uh, using the Hearst exponent to analyze stock market uh, time series data and also making prediction on these type of data. The Hearst exponent name after British um, hydrologist uh, H.E. Hearst, the Hearst exponent basically is a statistical measure used to classify time series, which is include the stock market pricing. And by analyzing this time series, um, Hearst exponent, we can gain insight into the long uh, term memory and predictability uh, two aspects that are significantly aid in financial uh, decision making. So as we said, the uh, definition of the Hearst exponent uh, is, a, is actually a statistical measure that quantifies the tendency of time series to exhibit uh, long-term trends or mean uh, revision. And what do we mean by long-term trends is basically a consistent price movement or value movement over the long period. It can be upward or downward. Uh, investors consider these trends when dedicating uh, their uh, assets or deciding to buy or sell um, sort of like uh, stock market. The mean uh, reversion is the theory that uh, the price is returned to their average. If a stock price deviates from the average, it expects it to revert back over time. Uh, traders buy below the average and sell above, anticipating a rebound for uh, correction. Uh, mathematically, it's uh, calculate the Hertz exponent is calculated using the rescale range analysis, which assesses the scaling behavior of the time series. And we will get to that in the next slide. Also, the Hertz exponent is a value which is range between zero to one. Uh, with value above uh, 0 0.5 in uh, indicating persistence and below that mean reversion. So um, how we can interpret the Hertz exponent values? Um, values around 0 0.5 suggest a random or unpredictable time series. Uh, past value do not impact future value, aligning with the efficient market hypothesis in the stock market. If the value of uh, Hertz exponent is above 0 0.5, it shows the persistence and trending with high value followed by high values or low value followed by low values. This suggests positive feedback indicating momentum or trend following behavior in a stock price market. And conversely, if the Hersk exponent is less than 0 0.5, it means the mean reverting with high values followed by lower values and vice versa. This suggests a tendency to revert to the mean such as stock prices rising and then decreasing or vice versa. Um, so we talked about the rescaled range method to calculate the Hertz exponent, uh, which is actually a number of steps that need to be taken. Um, and in one of this step, uh, the rescale image is basically known as um, RS statistics. It's, measure, it's measures used to assess the long-term dependencies or um, variety of the time series data. Um, First, we detrend, detrend the series. Basically, we subtract the mean of time series from the series itself, and the center of the series will be around zero. We then calculate uh, cumulative deviation, which is creating a new series that is the cumulative sum of the detrended series. Then we create a subset of the data, break it up to cumulative division series into non-overlapping subset of particular size, and then we calculate the range R, and then start on deviation. And we later calculate the rescaled range by computing the ratio between R, which is our range, and the standard deviation. And then we average over all of the subset, and we repeat this multiple time um, to go over all of the subset, and we basically um, estimate the Hertz exponent based on this. Um, the estimated Hertz exponent, we plot the log average of um, rescaled ratio against the log of the subset side. Uh, the slope of the line of the best fit through the point is an estimate of the Hertz exponent. Uh, we do have an example in here uh, showing uh, different uh, time series with different values of Hertz exponent. And again, we can see the values that are lower than 0 0.5, I tend to show, they, they tend to show not uh, sort of like a predictive uh, behavior with respect to uh, this line over here, which is actually showing a, kind of like an upward trend mostly. 
Um, so whenever we have a trend, we can have a higher uh, Hertz exponent. And when we don't, we basically will go back to the mean or uh, reverse the mean. And obviously, uh, if we have the Hertz exponent equal to five, um, it's sort of like a random walk and we have no information regarding this one. As you can see, this line over here, the green one shows no trend um, in the time series data. The applications of Hertz exponent uh, could be used in finance, hydrology, and signal processing. Um, in finance, it will be used for assessing market trends, predicting the future stock market. Uh, for hydrology, it helps to analyze, for example, the river flow pattern. And in signal processing, it can be used to analyze the EEG signals or detecting anomalies in complex system. There are other calculation methods for Hertz exponent, um, such as um, the, the trended uh, fluctuation analysis or variance time analysis. The first one is scaling the behavior of time series by removing trends and fluctuation. And the other one is actually focusing more on the various time relationship between these uh, values. And we basically select the calculation method depending on the characteristic of the data and the research objective. There are also some limitation and consideration with Hertz exponent. Um, the Hertz exponent may not be suitable for all type of time series data and may not accept all underlying complexities. And uh, it also sh should be used as a part of like a comprehensive analysis with uh, conjunction with other statistical techniques. So you cannot simply just use Hertz exponent and get a result out of it. I also wanted to represent a case of study. In this case of study, we will explore how uh, Hertz exponent will be used to analyze the stock market. The data used is a synthetic data, um, consists of historical stock prices uh, from a company. The objective is to understand long-term memory and predictability of the stock price using the Hertz exponent. So we first uh, gathered the historical stock prices, and then uh, these data were pre-processed, including cleaning values, adjusting the stock splits, and normalizing the data. Then we used the RS to calculate the Hertz exponent, and later on we obtained the Hertz exponent values, and we were able to interpret uh, un and understand the market behavior. So here's the result of the synthetic stock price data generated. As you can see, uh, we have uh, the Hertz exponent of 0 0.1, which is closely um, to zero. And this indicate uh, the reverse mean in our data. So um, the value is significantly less than 0 0.5. It indicates a strong mean reverting behavior in the stock prices. And this suggests that the stock market tends to revert back to its mean or average price over time and may be uh, suitable for trading strategies that exploit the mean reversion because the stock market could be uh, having um, a high value of first exponent when uh, interpreting or lower. But at, this, uh, at both scenarios, we could have some strategies to gain some uh, benefits uh, or revenue out of the market. Uh, what is the summary and takeaway? Uh, we realized that Hertz exponent is a valuable tool for analyzing long-term memory and persistence in time series data. Um, the, uh, we also found out the uh, Hertz exponent has many applications such as finance, hydrology, and signal processing. We learned how we can interpret the Hertz exponent values and how they can help us to understand the predictability or trend behavior in a time series data. Uh, and we also learned that some limitation of first exponent and the use of uh, the Hertz exponent analysis as a as a part of a comprehensive analysis. Thank you so much and have a great day.